Hey guys, welcome to Glow Up Cooking with Lindsay, where I am sharing dishes designed to transform you physically, mentally, and emotionally from within so you can live a purposeful, empowering life because cooking is totally transformative. The healing powers from within, the food that works for you, as well as the art therapy uh, that cooking allows with working with your hands, which we don't always get on a daily basis. So anyway, so we are working through our Building Our Inner Champion series where we are overcoming self-doubt because what we have learned in the Sexy Garden series is that when we want to conquer a dream, pursue a dream, we have to go doubtless. In order to conquer anything you want, you cannot have doubt. So we are working through that in the kitchen because you can use cooking as a way to help you overcome self-doubt because we are building our confidence and building our confidence is you work with uncomfortable things. And I know you say, well, Lindsay, I, maybe I wanna be a real estate mogul. What does this have to do with cooking? Honestly, confidence is transferable. So last week we were with a pumpkin pie, or a pie pumpkin, sorry, which is a little intimidating. And now we are gonna work with a spaghetti squash because spaghetti squash is also a little intimidating. Luckily, it is a lot like our pie pumpkin and the way we prepare it. So what you first want to do when you pick a spaghetti squash, which they are in season now, and one way you know when things are in season is when you have a better dollar amount. They are they go for a little better price. But um, you want to go for a spaghetti squash. It's like heavier. I always like to go for the golden yellow kind. Um, yeah. So I, I usually go for like the smaller type, but that's only because I'm usually doing like a serving of one or two people, you know, no families, but... Maybe if you want to have a bigger, uh, go for a bigger, but this is a uh, average size. Unlike the uh, pie pumpkin, they do come in different sizes. So that, that's why it will make a difference on how long you cook your spaghetti squash. Okay, so just like the pie pumpkin, we're going to cut this in half. Okay, so first of all, it's better if you have a warm spaghetti squash or um, so you don't, you if you have been storing it in the fridge, take it out to room temperature. What I also like to do, and I recommend it in the book, you can put it in the oven for a little bit to warm it up, to like soften it. So as you can see, it does like, the knife will trap in there, which is what I was afraid with, but I have the pipe pumpkin, but I get lucky with that. So when you wanna like wrestle it out of there, you know, take the blade away from you. Okay, the same way we still have this knob here so we're going to try to cut in half away from that you don't have to deal with it so it will be somewhat in half all right <laughs> i was going to have a harder time with this one but this is a you get a little workout in the kitchen as well all right i know i did not cut the ends off of this i do so if you get close to the bottom i'm going to go all the way in Have a sharp knife when you do this. A sharp chef's knife, please. All right, so we have two halves. Okay, so the pie pumpkin, we did save the seeds because we use them for the soup, and I had all this, like, jumbo jumbo about how they're so great in nutrients. Honestly, like, when it comes to the seeds and spaghetti squash, you can save them as well. I'm sure the same nutrients, but I don't know. I feel like they're more capturing, like, they have more of the flesh entangled in them and so I just it's going to take longer to separate you definitely can if you want to otherwise I'm just going to go ahead and spoon them out so each half the way I usually start is I go with a spoon and I'll just get it all broken up and then I will always like finish with my hand and take them out okay so again, you just want to have the middle cleaned out as much as possible. You can already see the shreds coming through. Okay. All right, so as much as possible, right? We'll just pretend I cleaned the other one as well. Let me just rinse my hands for a second. So just like the pie pumpkin, we're going to put this on either a parchment line baking sheet or a silicone line baking sheet. It just kind of depends on how I'm feeling. If I'm out of time and I don't feel like a lot to clean up, I'll just use a personal line. If I feel like, you know, saving the environment or something, I'll use my silicone mat. So the same thing, we're just gonna place it face down. Um, just pretend I clean this one out as well. 
there's no need to add olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, or sea salt. You can if you want to. I learned that you don't have to. Um, this oven's going to be about 375 or 400 degrees. Okay. So what I'm going to do, ooh, just like the just like the pumpkin, you're going to cook it till it's more tender. It's really important. You can overcook a spaghetti squash. I don't want to deter you. Um, don't worry about it. Like, honestly, I have definitely overcooked a spaghetti squash in the past. And what just happens is it just becomes, like, more mushy because you want strands. You want it to, you want to have, like, al dente noodles, okay? The best thing about a spaghetti squash is to, it's a pasta substitute because a cup of cooked spaghetti squash, it's, like, is only 10 grams of carbs. It's very light in calories. So if you love your, you know, if you love your pasta, this is the best substitute for it. Or one of the best, I should say, because I know there are a lot of great, like, bean pastas out there. Okay, so you've cooked it. Okay, so here the thing is, again, every oven is different, and I know that's kind of, like, annoying to say, but it, it's so true. So, after about, like, 20 minutes and see how it's going. So, and you know what? The worst comes the worst. You t test it out, take it, like, your fork goes in there, and you feel like, okay, if you go through, then you cool it off, and you feel like, Oh, maybe it's a little too raw. Just like put it back in there. I've totally done that. Again, you just do not want the mushy, but I don't know what just happened there. I don't know. That was weird. <laughs> okay, sorry. Anyway, because this is what you want. You want these nice shreds. So what happens, I already started this one because <laughs> I just wanted to make sure it was okay. So you get your spaghetti squash. Let it cool so you can handle it. And all you do is you take your fork and you start shredding. And then you have these, these strands. Isn't that neat? I thought this was the coolest thing. The first time I tried this was in like my early, was in my early 30s. And I just thought this was the coolest thing. All right, so right with this. Um, by the way, today's dish I have never done before in this combination. Um, I kind of was wrestling with like what I was gonna share with you. Whoa, what I was gonna share with you. And so, but I don't know. Well, this is great. Sorry, guys. Um, my video is going in and out, apparently. I'm not sure if it's happening on your end. But anyway, so we're going to get these shreds in. And I will get this show finished. So just please, like, just keep watching. Okay, because you can see you get so much out of the spaghetti squash. By the way, you can clean these all out and use these as bowls as well as, like, dishes, which is, like, really fun. I considered doing that today, but then I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. Okay, so that's good enough for now. All right. Okay, I don't know why that keeps happening. Um, so hopefully you guys don't hear me all there. I'm not sure what I'm saying. All right, let me like... Oh, what we're going to do is we are going to use this. We're going to add spaghetti squash. We're going to make a whole big bowl type of thing. So we're going to use the pumpkin mash we made last week. Remember that pumpkin mash? We're going to put it into a hummus, and this is going to be like our sauce. Okay, so right now I already have a drink. Okay, I am not sure what is happening. All right, I'm going to try to do this. But thank you guys so much for staying with me. Okay, so I have the pumpkin mash to a regular hummus, and what that's going to do is like add extra, uh, extra obviously vegetables and extra vitamin A to hummus. It's also going to lighten it up because, you know, hummus is a little bit thick and dense because then it's got the chickpeas. So by adding the pumpkin, it's going to make it thinner and lighter, and it's going to be a perfect sauce. So I still want to be able to make sure I can mix it in. All right, we're still here. Okay, so I'm going to thin this out. I'm going to make sure it's thin enough because so I'm going to mix it with my spaghetti squash. So I'm just going to mix it with some lemon juice and extra, olive, extra virgin olive oil. So I'm going to see how this is. Again, guys, I think my video keeps cutting in and out for some reason. So I will still be here. Okay. This is good enough. You know, it's going to be a thick sauce, so I'm going to add a few tablespoons to our spaghetti squash. And then what I'm going to do is take some tongs, and then I'm going to go ahead and just mix it in my spaghetti squash. It's really cool, like, to have, like, when you make a sauce and you can make it into, like, so different things and make it very versatile. I mean, hummus is, like, I mean, I don't know who doesn't like hummus. It's so delicious. Okay, so I'm going to add some more. And if at any time you add your sauce and you feel like, 
Okay, so still a little bit too thick. You know, just add some more lemon juice, extra virgin olive oil, whatever. All right, this is looking great. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some extra stuff. Okay, so I want some greens. I always advocate making greens. So what I have done is I have blanched some kale and then some beet greens that's actually from the garden. And then what I did is I allowed them to dry. You don't want stuff that's like wet here. And then it still wasn't, I allowed it to air dry and then it still wasn't air dried enough. So I did put a little bit in the oven just to like air dry a little bit more. So I'm gonna add some of that, just toss it. And again, you can always keep adding your hummus as you go along. As you see, this is really thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of lemon juice. I know, okay, so guys, Shortcut, lemon juice now comes straight up lemon juice. Please do not buy the lemon juice that comes in that like green container. It has extra, this one is just pure organic lemon juice. That's all it is. It's, it's about $8, but, and that is honestly a deal. When you think about like each lemon is like a dollar a piece nowadays. Who decides bring them on camera? Okay. I'm not really sure. Something on my like Facebook Live, it's like bring them a camera or something. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> All right, hopefully you guys can see this. I have had some camera outages today, some technical difficulties. All right, mix it up. I'm gonna definitely add some more of my pumpkin hummus. This is a quick episode tonight because usually I have two different um, recipes, but this one I'm just doing one. Okay, so I'm also gonna add, this looks really good. Um, again, I still wanna probably thin it a little bit more, so I'm gonna just add a little bit extra virgin olive oil. There we go. Okay, another thing I decided to add, like right at the last minute, is I did some eggplant again for my garden, and I mixed it with some coconut aminos, a little bit of rice vinegar, some honey, and I let it marinate, and I put it in the oven. This is gonna add like a unami flavor because I'm not adding meat. Um, and honestly guys, everything I do, you can always add meat. It's just like I said for the cookbook, people are like, I'm not a vegan. I'm like, I told you guys, you don't have to be vegan. Like you, anything like that, like a substitute, like you can, if you don't like beans, substitute it with like chicken or something like that. You know, really the premise of the cookbook was again to teach you how nutrients work for your body and to help you understand how food works for you and the functionality of food and helping how it transforms and all that kind of happy stuff. <laughs> I was about to say something else. And and it's just very veggie centric because we should all eat more veggies. Okay. So guys, we are like ready to plate. This is a fast one today. All right. Oh, so got our plate. Sorry, this is really simple. <laughs> All right, so we have our spaghetti squash with our blanched kale, our blanched beet greens, and our pumpkin hummus. So we already have protein already in the hummus because this has those chickpeas. It's also like high in fiber. I just added the eggplant. I mean, this is like, talk about a rainbow dish. Like this is the rainbow dish, which I love having these rainbow dishes because I feel like that's my insurance. Like I'm getting all the colors of the rainbow. So I know that my body is getting what it needs because it's so important to have variety of diet. Is that looking pretty? How's that look, guys? All right, all right. <laughs> this is always my favorite part. All right, so we have that topped. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna add some, what do we do first? I got some chopped parsley and we're just gonna add that. It's always fun to add some greens like around the perimeter. It kind of gives it some life. I always, Anytime you can add an herb, you know, herbs are full of nutrients. There's like no calories or anything in there and they just help smell the dish. It makes it more aromatic. Okay. Okay. I'm so sorry. I feel like this is so fast. I'm, I'm, I'm usually using a lot longer videos. Okay. Anyway, now we're going to add some more texture. So we are going to be adding for our crunch, we're going to be adding apple chips. This is totally a fall meal right here. So I have my own homemade apple chips. These are the ends, like um, I cut them with a mandolin at the ends. I have like this spray, these little like bits or whatnot. Um, there are some apple chips you can buy now that have like no extra oils and everything. I think it's like simple or bare naked or something like that. I know I've seen them at Costco, 
but they're not always widely available because you want to have that crunch. So anyway, so these are ones that I have done myself. So I'm just going to top them on here. I'm going to top to add some extra crunch and some extra texture. Anytime you can add extra texture, it's just extra satisfying. All right. And then we're finishing off. I always like to add sauce on sauce. I do have this recipe for a pomegranate glaze in the book, which is like, it's, it's kind of a process. They do now have the pomegranate molasses, which is kind of like very similar. Uh, what is this? Okay, this is just 100% pomegranate juice. And I'm just gonna drizzle it around. And this is, again, it's just gonna add an extra like look to it, extra sexy look, because it is extra sexy. And then just a little bit. You don't want a lot of this stuff because it is like really sugary. Oh, yes, yes. It just gives it that little sex appeal. All right, and we have, it's done. Oh my goodness, we truly have the rainbow here. So this is our final look of our dish. So we have the spaghetti squash, the pumpkin hummus with the chickpeas, tahini, and our pumpkin mash. Then we have blanched green, um, beet greens and kale. We've added some eggplant. We topped it with some crunchy homemade apple chips and a pomegranate glaze. So this is truly a dish. I mean, I think it's sexy as hell and it's full of nutrients and it's just so delicious. And yes, so that is tonight's dish. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. And Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry, this is like really quick tonight. I didn't think it was gonna go that fast. But anyway, thank you guys so much. I'll see you next Wednesday. <laughs>